today, we, we appreciate the media being here because we wanted to share some information about a tragic event that happened in our state that earlier today we learned touched our community directly. So I'm going to provide you a brief chronology through my lens, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions. Last night, like all of you, I was living my life. My life last night was being at a school board meeting, and my phone started to ding in my pocket. And I looked down, and I saw the tragic news that all of you saw that once again in our country, there was a tragic shooting at a school. In this case, it was Michigan State University. At the time, I was touched as a dad. I have a graduate, a graduate Spartan who graduated in 21. And I was touched as a human. And I knew that we had many of our graduates at, at Michigan State University. I also knew that Michigan State University is the biggest university in the state of Michigan, and pretty much everyone knows somebody. At that time, though, I felt like it was a lancing piece that was going to just touch us somewhat. Now, of course, whenever there's a tragedy that involves schools, we do work partner with our building administration. We partner with our mental health teams to support kids. Because we know when there's kids and adults that have been affected by trauma, a tragedy somewhere else might touch them. And we learned that it was reinforced for us again at Oxford. Didn't happen directly here, but we were all touched by that about approximately 14 months ago. This morning, my administrative team were in our, they're in our different schools. I, in fact, was at Gross Point South High School. When we started to get information from some of our students that it was possible that one of the students at that time, we thought, was potentially a, a graduate of Gross Point South. We started to talk to our kids. Sometimes kids know stuff before adults do. We reached out to families, and it was confirmed that one of the students that was tragically killed at Michigan State University was, in fact, a 2021 graduate of Gross Point South named Brian Frazier. We immediately shifted into a mode of creating a crisis center at the school because as a 2021 graduate, there would be current students that knew Brian. There would also be teachers and other staff that had had Brian. We started that work when I received a phone call that I was not expecting that, in fact, the same type of information, a tragic connection to something that happened 90 miles from here, was also touching Gross Point North High School. We quickly learned, same and same methodology, students talking, eventually we talked to a family, and we learned that Ariel Anderson, Gross Point North class of 2021, was also a tragic victim at Michigan State University. I have to tell you, and I put this in my communication, I took this pause and thought to myself, how is it possible? How is it possible that this happened in the first place, an act of senseless violence that has no place in our society, and in particular, no place at school? But then it touched our community not once, but not twice. And now this event that has touched our nation, in fact, is now touching directly our community. I have to share, and I want to share, that I have felt an intense amount of support from our community and from the leaders across our community. I've personally had contact with Kevin Hertel, our state senator. I've personally reached out with and had some back and forth, and we're going to talk later today, House Speaker Tate. And the governor's office has also reached out to me to offer all the supports they possibly can. This is a time when, as a parent, as an educator, that I don't even have the words. You know, you come to these things, and I'm like, what am I going to say? Well, what do we say? I've never given this speech before, but I've seen other superintendents do it. I can't say anything more or different other than we have to figure out as a society, how can we support the mental health of our kids? How can we support the mental health of our adults? How can we help everyone stay safe so that there isn't another superintendent giving this press and conference, or more importantly, another set of parents that are getting this terrible grieving information? That's what we know at this point. I'm happy to answer any questions from the media about what's going on. Yes, ma'am. Can you talk a little bit about Brian individually and sort of his accomplishments, his personality, and the same with Ariel as well? I, I wish I could. Um, I have the good fortune to know many of the kids in our school district, but with 6,300 kids, I don't know them all. And unfortunately for me, I didn't have a chance to know Brian or Ariel. I have had conversations with Mr. Hompka, that's the principal at Gross Point South. I've had conversations with Dr. Murray. Um, the principal at Gross Point North. And these two students, just like all of our students, were these exceptional kids that did stuff in school, right? Like they're at Michigan State, like they're doing these great things, right? So they did those great things at North and South. 
and they will be missed. But no, I can't tell you specifically this thing about Brian or this thing about Ariel. I wish I could. I wish I'd had that opportunity. I unfortunately don't have that to share today. Could you talk to us just about as word spread through through these buildings, you know, as, as students were realizing what had happened to their friends, can you talk to us about, uh, about managing that and, and what you saw and heard as a result of getting this devastating news? So, yes. I started, we started to have some students. So what happens in a community like this is first, the kids know stuff before the adults. If any of you have children, I do. They communicate better, different, certainly faster than all of us. And right around, our school starts at eight o'clock and around 7.50 or so, a couple of kids had come up to their counselors at South or their teacher and said, hey, did you hear this thing? And that started filtering to me. And right about 8.05 or so, we called our crisis team together. And it really became real for me when I started walking down the hall to our crisis team meeting. And I saw a young lady, didn't know her, she's a student at the school, walking the other way who was crying. And clearly, she was heading to the counseling office, which is the right place for her to be if she needs help. And that's really where it hits you. And then as I was in this meeting at South, I start getting information about the situation at North. And I'll be honest with you, I thought somebody crossed their wires. You know, we've got two high schools in a small community. Maybe the kids at North were confused and like they thought it was, like, if that makes some sense. And unfortunately it wasn't. I remember telling my deputy superintendent because he was at North High School, what's going on there, Roy? Tell me this. And he's like, John, I think this is happening all over again here because the information at North was coming out about 45 minutes slower than at South. And it was a moment of disbelief. Like I put in my letter, as I chatted with staff members walking down the hall, I've had parents reach out to me. I, I had a parent say, John, this has to be wrong. And I said, I, I wish it was wrong. Like, I, I wish I could write you this letter and say, made this mistake. And unfortunately, it's not what happened. You talked about a student going to the counselor's office. How are you instructing the entire district or students to go to get help? So what happens when we have a tragic situation like this, and unfortunately, this happens not, not just something as tragic as Michigan State, but anytime there's a loss of life or a tragic situation in a high school setting. We have our staff members, our mental health team, so our counselors, our principals, our social workers trained. We actually have a specific training protocol called PREPARE that we use to manage and help us through a crisis. Because like, we shouldn't have to make a decision at that point. We should have like a script. Part of our script, once we know that there's a tragic event that kids are going to have a response to, is we set up a location, in this case at our, in our high schools, individual rooms in our high schools, and then we write a script that we send to our staff members and say, at this specific time, we want you to read this script. And this script basically says, this terrible event happened. If you feel the need to reach out, contact your teacher, contact your mom or dad, but you're certainly welcome to come down to the counseling office. We then take that exact same script and we share it with our parents because our parents should always know what we've shared with their children. And so we share that exact same information with the parents. And so then we, we actually pull counselors from across the district. So when I was at South and North today, I saw not only counselors from South and North, but I saw counselors from our middle schools. And we had even our mental health professionals that aren't affiliated with the schools, but we have a great partnership with our local hospitals and other mental health providers. They were calling us and saying, what can we do? And so we bring in those sorts of connections so that every kid that needs to talk to somebody has somebody to talk to. It's also important to know, sometimes a kid doesn't want to talk to a counselor but wants to talk to mom or dad, and we never stand in between those things either. So we had kids say, hey, can I call my mom? Well, they've got a cell phone, so they did it without asking in most <laughs> cases. And they just immediately talked to their mom, and some parents said, I want to bring my kid home. And of course, we allow that to happen. They're the mom and dad in that case. What other questions can I answer for everyone? You say to graduating students that this might strike fear in their heart and dissuade them from actually going to college. So I'll make this about, um, I had a conversation with my son because he graduated from our schools last year. And I, I wanted him to hear from me like a dad, right? So I gave him a phone call today as this information was coming out. And I said to him, how are you feeling? And so like, always I rely on that reaction where they're at. And so my son was in a place, he was comfortable, just wanted to know some details. If there's a kid who's now concerned, should I go to college or should I come to school? We at our school district work really hard to keep every kid safe. I know at Michigan State they do the same sort of thing. I would encourage if a kid is not comfortable right now, have the conversation with mom and dad. Have the conversation with a friend, an adult that can help them, a partner, to make help them feel comfortable. Unfortunately, 
and I know because I've had a student who went to Michigan State, she's not there now, every Michigan State student is probably going to have some apprehension the next time they're asked to go back on that campus or if they're still there right now. And I wish we didn't have to have that apprehension, but in our society right now, unfortunately, with these tragic events, the kids feel that, so we have to help adults, help kids feel comfortable to come to an adult they care about and have the conversation. Can you on that question? In your experience, um, as time goes on, um, is it, it almost, I think, feels a bit surreal, I think, even to the families right now. Um, do kids, um, is their processing the same? Does it feel a little more like shell shot initially? And do you anticipate that they'll uh, need increased counseling in the days coming? Kids feel everything probably different and more than adults do. Um, we have to remember when someone's going through a feeling, it's their feeling, not our feeling, so we can't prescribe what that's going to be like. Um, I think it's just helping them first have great relationships with kids so they feel comfortable sharing their feelings, and then having the right people, which I believe we do, to support kids. And yes, we are going to have, we've already arranged with our administrators, I'm not going to be at this building tomorrow, I'm going to be at Gross Point South first thing. Not because I'm a mental health professional, but because I know every staff member there by name and I hope they feel a little better when they see their superintendent walking around. And I know our other administrators will be doing the same thing and we are going to have our mental health staff on, on site, not just on call to support people. Will it be classes, um, the, the, the kids will stick to their yeah. regular schedule and then if they need to individually break out? Yes. Well. It's really important that you give kids what they need. The vast majority of our kids were able to process this in a way where for them the best thing was to be in class. And that's what they needed. We, we shouldn't stop that and say, you can't get what you need, but we need to provide them what they do need. So we do have most, the vast majority, 90 some percent of our kids are right now in their class doing their class thing. But for the kids that need something different, we're trying to provide that. Yes? Piggybacking off the previous question, less than a year and a half ago, we had the Oxford shooting, and now we have this one, not just for colleges, but for your high school students. Do you see this impacting them at all? Absolutely, yes. I, this, this has happened far too many times. I'm older than many of you. I was a teacher during Columbine. And I, I, not in Columbine, but I was an educator at the time, and I remember those feelings. And we can go down the list, unfortunately, of terrible school tragedies, and they do take a toll and they do have an impact. They have an impact on me. You know, somebody today on my team reminded me, I think today is the fourth year anniversary of Parkland today. And like that, that was a feeling, okay? So I think it does. I think kids are really res very resilient, and I think our kids are gonna do well, but we do need to meet their needs. I'm confident we will. But as a society, we have to answer these questions about how do we keep everybody safe? How do we provide supports they need? The best thing we could possibly do, and I don't have the answer, is to, if we didn't have these situations in the first place, then we wouldn't have to worry so much about providing what we need. Now, I'm in the providing the needs business, like meeting needs, so we're gonna keep providing that piece. My business isn't the societal safety piece, but I think we do need to answer those questions and figure that out, and no, I don't have an answer. Have any students requested counseling today? Oh, many, some students have taken advantage and gone to counseling. Um, I went and checked in our counseling locations at both of our high schools earlier today, and there were a handful of students there. We will have those continuing over the coming days as necessary. Are there any programs or, or maybe school assemblies to, uh, planned to gather the students together to maybe remember these, these lost students? So one of the things that the prepare training we do and we've been trained in is to make sh is the best thing for most of our kids is to keep school school. So we are not going to do a during the day memorial or something like that because most, most kids need regular school with support. The, I, I imagine and I'm confident our community will provide memorials and support outside of the school day and those are the, we partner with our providers and if we know there's a vigil going on or there's a memorial service going on, um, we will pro provide support and partnership with them, but we don't do that during the school day. Are you concerned at all that we are going to see copycat threats in the coming days like we've seen in, other, in the wake of other tragedies? I think about school safety every day. We have, every school district, not just Grosse Point Public Schools, but certainly Grosse Point Public Schools has spent millions of dollars to keep, make our kids, our schools safer. Um, so I think about safety every day. Um, I don't know that I think, like, I'm worried about a copycat situation necessarily, but I think everyone, everyone, whenever something happens, um, 
If you're driving your car and you almost get on an accident on the freeway because someone almost swerves into you, what do you do? You drive a little more carefully, if that makes some sense. Hold the wheel a bit tighter. I think every educator holds the wheel a bit tighter in the coming days. Um, we do a great job with safety here, and I know they do at other schools as well. But when something like this happens, of course we're all more vigilant because it's more top of mind. Did you hear anything from uh, any students uh, or teachers? Was there any indication that Brian and Ariel were dating or hanging out at the time? Or? No, I, I, I have no way of knowing if they have any relationship one way or the other with each other. I don't have any information about that, Ted. Other questions for me? From a school standpoint, obviously, we've seen uh, over the couple of, last couple of years as far as safety measures that have been taken place by, school, by schools who are either directly impacted or just as an educator, I mean, you probably want to know what's the best way to protect your kids. Is that something that, that this school district will continue to revisit in the near future as we continue to have these situations unfold? We had a full safety audit in 2015 um, by a set of outside professionals that gave us recommendations on how to make our building safer. Then as part of our 2018 bond issue, our voters supported the idea of making our schools safer. So we've added a secured vestibule at every school. In fact, all of you walked in through it when you came here today to kind of make sure that we create a safe situation. We've added new locks. We've added new safety measures. We provided training to all of our staff members um, this past August. All of our staff members were trained, trained on how to respond to an active shooter situation. Um, it makes me sad to have to say that. Like, I wish I'd been able to provide like this training for that day about reading or writing. But we know that what our staff and our kids needed was safety training, so we provide that. Um, one of the most important things we do is I have in my cell phone the six phone numbers of each of our six public safety chiefs and we talk on a very regular basis. One of the best things that we have is when something goes on in our community, they give me a call and say, hey John, this thing is going on, you need to know about it. And then I do the same. So for example, for today, knowing a lot of media were coming to Barnes, we gave the phone call to the Ghost Point Woods Public Safety and said, don't be surprised, there's gonna be a lot of news trucks and adults, because that helps keep everybody safer and makes people feel more comfortable. So it's that relationship that I think is one of the most important things we can do. When you think of, you know, Certainly, um, post-Oxford, many school districts, including ours, um, experienced some level of, spent mostly on social media, kids saying things that were threatening. And we saw certainly a, a, a set of that. And we saw when that happens, there's both legal ramifications for family, and I know our county prosecutor worked really hard to do the right things with those families. And then I know that our school district, when necessary, had to do those sorts of things too, um, in terms of making sure we kept, keep every kid safe. Um, fortunately, we have not had those situations lately. I am confident our kids are great kids and we're not going to have that situation. However, we are prepared if necessary um, and we'll do what we need to do to keep everyone safe. In those cases, the first thing is partnering with the police. Those things happen. The first phone call is the police so that we can make sure everyone's safe. 